Do you still ask what is still water? It is the natural receptacle of the countless millions of logs that for a long time to come will float down the River St. Croix. Stillwater will be a second Bangor, Maine in the lumber trade. Nothing can prevent it. The St. Croix Union, May 26, 1855. Of all the lumbermen in the St. Croix River Valley, none was more powerful than the barrel-chested, bald-headed Isaac Staples. A contemporary described him as restless, alert, far-seeking, systematic, and persistent. He arrived a stranger in Stillwater in 1853 when Minnesota was still a territory. A minister's son, he was born in Maine in 1816 and as a young man took work as a lumberjack on the Penobscot River. He was already in his late thirties and on his way to a prosperous career in the lumber business. But he came west in 1853 at the behest of business partners to purchase pine lands in the St. Croix Valley. He brought business acumen from his years in New England, while his partners from Maine and Massachusetts provided the much-needed dollars. Looking back, one of his contemporaries, William Folson, wrote, The advent of Isaac Stables in Stillwater gave to the city new life. Soon after his arrival, with the investors backing Staples and Samuel Hersey, built the first large steam mill in town. The St. Croix Union newspaper marveled, everything about the mill is done by machinery, even to the filing of the saws, the handling and shifting of the lumber, and the removal of slabs. Staples and Hersey established a general store in town, dealing in dry goods, groceries, and clothing, meant mainly to outfit his lumber camps. Over the next three decades, Staples had a hand in virtually every aspect of the lumbering business. No one controlled more the vast pine forest or milled as much lumber as Isaac Staples. He was behind the creation of the powerful St. Croix Boom Company and controlled its vital operations through his ownership of its stock. His personal and financial interests spread to other endeavors. He was the valley's biggest and most successful farmer, and as president of the Lumberman's National Bank, one of its most important bankers. Staples made enough profit in lumber to set out on his own. He was an investor in many other mills, including the mill on the north end of Stillwater that now bears his name. It was built in 1850 by Seth Sawyer and Alva Heaton. After a few changes in ownership, Staples purchased the mill in 1869 and updated its machinery, turning it into a prosperous business. Eight years later, he added a four-story flour mill next door. The sawmill was later acquired by the Stillwater Manufacturing Company, which supplied doors, windows, and sashes, and other millwork to some major buildings throughout the nation. Among these buildings are the Minnesota State Capitol, the South Dakota State Capitol, and the Federal Building in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. There are hundreds of homes in Stillwater and the surrounding area with windows, doors, or molding made by the company. Isaac Staples might have been Minnesota's first millionaire, and to enjoy his wealth, he built a home in 1871, a French Empire-style mansion visible to most of the town as it perched on North Hill above his sawmill. It was there that he died in 1898. In an understated tribute, the local newspaper said, He has been a resident of this city for 45 years, and during that time has been a busy man. We can ill afford to lose such men as Isaac Staples. Staples. 